Welcome to our lecture online. In this video, we're going to take a look at friction on a slanted plane. Here we have a block that's sitting on the slanted plane. The angle is 30 degrees, and there is indeed the coefficient of static friction of 0.6 and a coefficient of kinetic friction of 0.3. We're going to first figure out what the direction and the magnitude of the friction force will be in this case. Then we'll try to figure out if the block will move and then we'll figure out that if we push the block to get it started, will the block continue to accelerate or will it slow down and stop? All right, first of all, how do you find the friction force for an object that's sitting on a slanted surface? You always start with the weight of the object pulling straight down to the center of the Earth. We have the force, mg, pulling straight down. And since we're sitting on a slanted surface, we're going to take that force, after all, a force has magnitude and direction, and split it up into its two components, one component perpendicular to the surface and one component parallel to the surface. So this is the component that's perpendicular to the surface, and this is the component that's parallel to the surface. Notice when you add these two components together, you get the original vector back. Now it turns out that this angle theta here, that's 30 degrees, is the same as this angle right here. This is also 30 degrees, the same angle. Oh, it's kind of small, let make it a little bit bigger. So here, this angle here is also 30 degrees. The reason why we know that those two angles are the same, that if you notice, this line right here is perpendicular to this line, and this line right here is perpendicular to this line. So therefore, if this is perpendicular to this line, and this is perpendicular to this line, then the angle between these two lines must equal to the angle between those two lines. That makes sense. And therefore, we can say that this component here is mg times the cosine of 30 degrees because this is the adjacent side to the angle and this being the hypotenuse. That makes this component of the vector equal to mg times the sine of theta. Now it turns out that this component right here is the component of the force that tries to pull the block down the incline. This component pushes the block against the surface and therefore the surface pushes back with an equal and opposite force which is called the normal force. Pushing back this way, the normal force which is going to be equal to the force that caused it which is mg cosine of 30 degrees. Notice it is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. Now the friction force. First of all, the direction of the friction force is determined by it's going to be opposite to the motion of the block if the friction force wasn't there in the first place. If there's no friction force, the block will slide down the incline, which means the friction force will be in the opposite direction. The friction force will be directed opposite from the motion it will have if the friction force wasn't there. The definition of the friction force is that's going to be equal to the normal force times mu. Now, of course, if the block is not moving, that will be the static coefficient of friction. If the block is moving, that will be the kinetic coefficient of friction. Well, let's assume that the block is not moving, and we'll find out in just a moment if it is or not. So let's call that the static coefficient of friction. And, of course, that means that this is equal to mg times the cosine of 30 degrees, that will be the normal force, times the coefficient of static friction. Now, how do we know if the block will move or the block will not move? Well, the force that causes the friction force is the mg sine theta. That is the force that causes there to be a friction force over here, because that's the reactionary force to the force trying to pull the block down the incline. Notice that this can never be larger than this. If this was larger than this, the friction force will pull the block up the incline, and of course, we've never seen that happen before. We don't expect that to happen. The friction force will all, always adjust itself so that it will be equal to the force that causes it until the force that causes it exceeds the maximum friction force, or the maximum that the friction force can be. So let's compare the two to one another. All right, so we have the net force, F net, is going to be equal to the force aiding the motion down the incline minus the force opposing the motion down the incline. If we assume that if the block does move, 
that the block will accelerate down the incline. And so we're looking for the net force, which means that's going to be the force aiding the acceleration minus the force opposing. mg sine theta will be aiding, the friction force will be opposing the acceleration. Now, this is going to be equal to mg sine theta minus the opposing force, which is mg cosine theta times the coefficient of static friction. Now, which of the two is larger? Well, the object will be stationary if this force is larger than this force. Now, again, it can actually never be larger, but if the maximum that this can be is larger than this, then it'll be stationary. So let's find out. Is mg cosine theta times mu static larger than mg sine theta? Question mark. That's what we're looking for. Is the static of it, is the static friction larger than the force trying to pull the object down the incline? If it is, of course, this would be the maximum friction force. This is the maximum friction force, force friction. If this is larger than that, it will not move. Okay, well, let's first of all take a look at this. We can see that we can cancel out the mg on both sides. And we can divide both sides by the cosine of theta. That means mu sub, the coefficient of static friction is it larger than sine of theta divided by the cosine of theta. That's the question mark. All right. Now, that's, of course, the tangent of theta, so mu sub s larger than the tangent of theta, question mark. And in this case, theta is 30 degrees, so the question is, is mu sub s larger than the tangent of 30 degrees? Well, let's find out. Mu sub s is 0.6. The tangent of 30, we'll need a calculator for that. So, is 0 0.6 larger than the tangent of 30 degrees? So we take the 30, take the tangent of that, and the tangent is 0 0.57. And therefore, that is indeed the case. If 0 0.6 is larger than that, that means the maximum friction force is larger than the force trying to pull the object down the incline, and therefore it will not move. And so therefore we have a static case. So answer to part A. Will the block move? The answer is no, because the, the maximum static friction, the mg cosine theta times mu sub s, the static coefficient of friction, is larger than the force trying to pull it down the incline. Next, let's say that we give it a little push beyond the mg sine theta. We come here, we give it a little push so that we exceed momentarily the maximum friction force and the block begins to move. Once the block begins to move, we no longer have the static coefficient of friction to deal with. We now have the, co the kinetic coefficient of friction to deal with, which is smaller than the static coefficient of friction. So once we get it moving, all of a sudden, the friction force drops to a lower value. So once moving, the maximum friction force, friction force max, is now going to be equal to the normal force times mu sub k, no longer mu sub s, which is the static coefficient of friction, is now mu sub k, which is the kinetic coefficient of friction. And so this is therefore going to be equal to mg cosine of theta, which is still the normal force pushing back from the surface to the block, times mu sub k. So again, we look for the net force, f net is equal to the force aiding minus the force opposing, so it's still going to be mg times the sine of theta, which is the force aiding the acceleration, pulling the block down the incline, minus, but now it's going to be mg cosine of theta times mu sub k opposing the acceleration. And now the question is, is this not larger than that? If it is, you have a positive value, there's a net force and the block will accelerate, or if this is still smaller than that, then the block will simply slow down and stop and not move after that. So what we want to do is we want to then solve for mu sub k. So what we're looking for is, is mg cosine of theta times mu sub k larger than 
mg sine of theta. In other words, is the friction force larger than the force pulling the block down the incline? Again, we can get rid of the mg's, and we can solve for mu sub k. Mu sub k is that larger than the sine of theta divided by the cosine of theta, which, I'm running kind of out of board space, let me come over here, which means we're looking for is mu sub k larger than question mark to the tangent of theta, which is 30 degrees. And now we know that mu sub k is 0 0.3, is that larger question mark than the tangent of 30 degrees, which in this case is still 0 0.577, and here you can say, no, the friction force is not larger. And therefore, we can say if the friction force is not larger, that means mg sine theta is larger, and the block will indeed accelerate. If you want to know what the acceleration is, even though I don't have a lot of board space, let's squeeze that one in. We can say that the acceleration is going to be equal to the net force divided by the mass. And so the net force is going to be mg sine theta minus move the a over there, mg cosine theta times mu sub k. So this is the force aiding acceleration minus the force opposing acceleration divided by m. The m's cancel out. And we can see that the acceleration is going to be g times the sine of theta, or in this case, theta is 30 degrees, minus the cosine of 30 degrees times mu sub k, which is 0 0.3, 0 0.3. And so this is how we find the acceleration once we realize that the force pulling the block down is greater than the maximum force that the friction can muster. And that's how it's done.